Hey guys, in the age old days, most software that came with hardware was locked in and there was no way to change it. But as technology progressed, manufacturers found a way to update this software and add added functionality to the existing hardware. So is there a way for manufacturers to update the underlying hardware itself, obviously in the future? And the answer to this is yes. The way this is possible is through something called FPGAs. So what are FPGAs? You're watching Danish and this is Dissolve Tech. So let's find out. FPGAs are not a new type of first-person shooter games, but they are in fact devices that can be reconfigured to whatever different logic gates that you want. FPGAs stand for Field Programmable Gate Arrays, and they are just an array of NAND or NOR gates. If you study digital electronics, you know that all combination logic can be condensed down into NAND and NOR gates, and different combinations of these NAND and NOR gates can give you various different kind of circuits that you want. How FPGAs work is by using these NAND and NOR gates and programming the connections in between them. So this means that certain logics that you would carry out in something called an ALU in a CPU can be manifested physically in the FPGA itself. Companies usually spend a large amount of cash in developing something called application specific integrated circuits or ASICs. And these are specialized hardwares that are designed to do a singular task. And at this point you must be asking, why do we need specific hardware? Isn't software good enough? For most cases it is, but for certain tasks that require very high speeds, hardware connections are always best. There is low latency with FPGAs because there are direct connections and multiple instances and programs can be run parallelly. Also, repetitive tasks like multiplication, addition and division do not need to take up CPU time, which frees up the CPU to do more complex things. Let's also take an example where you might need something called a PWM signal. PWM signals are square waves in which the on duration is changed. The number of PWM channels that comes in a controller or a CPU is fixed, but with FPGAs, this can be expanded indefinitely. And suppose you want to do real-time image processing, this application is suited more towards FPGAs than CPUs because if you try to do this on CPUs, most of your processing computation would be done there, leaving very little headroom for other applications. And in these cases, FPGAs can be a total lifesaver. If they are so good, what exactly is holding FPGAs back? Well, it's their cost and power consumption. Their cost is really high because they have to build in multiple units into these FPGAs and because there are several of these units, the power consumed by this is a lot higher than normal CPUs. That is why we see these relegated only to high performance computing applications. There is even an Intel Xeon processor with an FPGA built in. We all know that these industrial application things eventually do trickle down to consumer applications and I can't wait for when they are available in normal consumer CPUs. But will they completely replace CPUs? I don't think that will happen for quite a while, only because the rage right now is to make smaller and smaller transistor sizes. So when we finally reach the 6 nanometer threshold for silicon devices, I think that is when FPGAs will get a huge boost. With each of the transistor size fixed, this means that the only updates that can happen are architectural changes. And because these FPGAs allow for reconfigurable connections, but imagine a situation where you might be able to download the next iteration of the Intel CPUs directly onto your computers. Wouldn't that be just amazing? What do you guys think? Do you think this is possible? And if this happens, would you be one of the first people to buy the world's very first FPGA CPUs? Let me know down below. And for more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on social media over here and click that tiny button over there to subscribe. This is Danish and you're watching Dissolve Tech. And until next time, bye bye.